Hello and welcome back. This is your Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. We got carried away there with a lot of Fasiwa juice, so saying that was going on. With what Fasiwa juice, so saying? <laughs> Whatever. Um, that was going on with Fasiwa juice, so saying. Boom. That's boom. what I said, Ife. Mau, mau. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I promised in the beginning of the show that we have a lot packed for you, and we have a special guest in the building. This person is your favorite, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure, especially if you're a woman. Leo, <laughs> very good to look at in the eyes. Leo, um, Baba, mm, I'm about to murder your name. <laughs> okay, Leo, that's super popularly known as Leo. I, I guess you can call him that. Is a young COE of a number of companies. He is in the MD CEO of the big figure Small World and Limited. At the age of 17, he founded the Sods Entertainment in England. He later replicated the same company in the United States. So basically, he's a big boy. He was born on the 10th of July, 1992, and hails from Lagos. So he's a true Lagosian, not like us that are just like pretending. He went into Big River House in 2018, portraying himself as a businessman that he is, and Nigerians basically loved him for it. He did stop there, though. He is now currently public speaking, mostly on things that he is passionate about, like education, gender equality, real estate, empowerment, policy making, stopping trolls, giving hot for hot on Twitter. Like the list goes on really. Uh, but please welcome with me, Leo. Hi. Hi guys. Thank welcome you for joining us. Thank you so much for Mr. having me. Mr. Complainer. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Always complaining on Twitter. About women. <laughs> Not just women. It's mostly women. Yeah, mostly women. <laughs> but I don't know what we've done. And relationships. Yes, and and I, I think yes. somebody has hurt him. And you need to tell us so who she is, her address, she, she? what she looks like, Wait. eye color, so no, she just go and find her. Someone what? Huh? Hurt you, like somebody. Okay, so the thing about the thing about um, my past with relationships, I, you know, before, before now, I've not really been like privileged to have a very good relationship. Mm. I've been a, in a physically abusive relationship. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. When emotionally you abusive. Physically abused? Yes. My, so my, a woman my, was slapping as you do this your chest. Bro, my ex has stabbed me. What? <laughs> oh, wow. We, we really my need to has, talk about that. <laughs> we don't need to talk yeah, about that. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, but the thing is, okay, like, I had to stop because obviously um, my my girlfriend now didn't like the fact that people were always tagging her on my fear women tweets, but it was oh. just, it was just fear women because of what I've experienced. Mm. I'm not saying fear woman, that doesn't mean I'm not in love with someone right now, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So it was just fear women it was a, like a general thing like the way they say men are scum yeah. mm. are la la yes ladies will say men are scum but still what be would you say ladies are i just say fair women you know just i think them. ladies are still queens we just end up with them i beg you fair yard why are you playing to I a don't, gallery don't mind him right? i'm not playing are you, to are you, gallery, are you, are you no, trying no, to let me, let me tell you pick why me. I think, don't worry, we'll let me pick tell me. you why i think um <laughs> ladies are still queens because even the woman that i taught um was the enemy I ended up realizing that I learned a few things. I you, learned you a lot to, of things. You need to understand that men are kings doesn't still make the fact that men are still not trash and men are still not scum. So not the scum. fact that you, the fact that you're saying hmm. that is you, the fact that you're saying fear women doesn't still mean that women are not scum or women are still not queens. They're mm. still not scum and they are queens. Okay, okay, okay. Sha, I think you are <laughs> you are saying the same thing but in different ways. The point is, where a lot of things and. Uh, Gender, we genders were always exactly. against each other. Exactly, humans. Are everybody, a lot of everybody has yeah. range. Exactly. All um, right. So when you say physically abused, I'd like to, you know, delve into that. What led to the physical abuse? Because a lot of people look at abuse and they just feel like, okay, so it's what? Only for men. Huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's only, only for men. men. So what led to it? What What do you think you did that you deserve? Nobody I, deserves I, I to be abused. I didn't do anything. You know, that's the thing. It was, um, it was more of a. I don't want to go into details because mm. when it comes to speaking about my past, I try to respect the fact that these people have relationships they're inside now. Mm. So, you know, all I'm ready to talk about is that yeah, I didn't do anything. It was, it was more of a, like, probably she was triggered by something she's gone through in her life. And that was the way she thought was the best way to react. Mm. You know, it's not like I cheated or anything like that. It was just, it, it was a conversation. A conversation that led up to you maybe, getting stuck. Yes. Yeah, okay, you, okay, you. okay, 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 okay. Let's let's see the way they always try to just brush our own pain. <laughs> well, if it's their own pain now, they will even put it in film. We yeah. watch it one hour, thirty minutes. Okay. Our own two minutes charts now. You're already getting 
aggravated and, ah. and, and bored. Lord knows that, that, that that's not the case. First, no, that's the case. First of all, it's I've always it I've is. always advocated I've advocated a lot on this table that for any feminist, especially if you're built mm. with the right, you mm. know, core values and stuff, mm. we have to work together. If the men are not you know, getting elevated. We are not. The, uh, the reason why I'm trying to brush is because I think that there's more to Leo than just women talk. Um, reading your bio and like yeah. doing a lot about you, I was quite impressed and it was kind of upsetting to be honest because I didn't know much about you. I didn't watch your Big Brother Niger, whatever. So yeah. I didn't know for a long time that you were part of the Big Brother Niger crew. I just knew that yeah. you were this guy that so upset me with your tweets on <laughs> Twitter. So when I was reading your 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 stuff and I'm think, thinking. Bro, you have a lot that you've done. And then I checked your year and I feel like I've never started living life yet because like, what? <laughs> so that for me is something I really want to talk about. We can still go back to the women's stuff. Don't worry. We're not. We're um, done, But, you know, right? I want to know how you even got there. You're, what, 28? 20, 28, yeah. yeah. Um, 28 and you have a business in the UK, America, this place, that yeah. place. Investments in this and that. And then even things that you're doing for your parents and their legacy. I know you're doing something, um, something for your mom and all yeah. of that. What? I have a foundation for my mom yeah. exactly so how and when and in what capacity were you able to get your legs planted in all of this like who, who launched you into that because it's not very common okay so um, I started business because of necessity mm. you know um, I had a conversation with my dad in December 23rd 2009 you know where he said I was gonna be cut off totally you know yes so um, okay what was the reason? For exactly. The reason? Come on, you can't just drop that. I think he's the only one that can explain it. You know, God rest his soul. So I don't want to. I don't want to say. I don't want to assume. Mm. You understand? He's the only one that. But would was be able it to bad explain. blood or anything? No, there was no bad blood. Okay. You know, there was. It was. It wasn't so bad blood. So were you supposed to do something not to be cut off? No, I wasn't supposed to do anything not to be cut off. I think um, because um, I'm the only son of my dad. So I feel that was just his own way of saying, you know what, it's time for you to grow up. Yeah, be a man for yourself. You okay. Know? Maybe it was the wrong thing to do, but you know, the thing with Nigerian parents, they never really get it right totally. No one is perfect. Yeah. So I don't hold him against, parents, hold it against him. Yeah. 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 So I don't hold, hold it against him because it, it helped me to shape my future. So it was um, it was a necessity. And just to put in context, you were seventeen when this happened. Yes, I was in two thousand and nineteen. I was seventeen. And you were studying. Did yes, you finish? I was okay, yeah, you did, because you almost went to finish yeah, your yeah. PhD and all of that. Yeah. Okay, so um, he says, okay, you should get caught off and all of that, and then you start an entertainment. So business. Uh, why that? So we're not singing or rapping or acting. I wasn't singing or, or rapping. Okay, you know. So the thing is, with me, I look at. Um, I've always been in business. You know, in high school, I used to sell trainers. You know, um, that was how I started business. I'll go to Yaba Market, the old Yaba Market. I buy trainers for like three thousand. I go to school. I sell them for like five k, six k. I make my profit. You know, there was scroller chains. There was scroller belts. Mm -hmm. People buy it from accessories to die for mm -hmm. in my school for fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. I buy it for five thousand. Sell it to them for ten thousand. Mm -hmm. You know, that was how I started. I've always been in business, right. but I started structured business. 28th of May 2010. Mm. So I looked at it that at the time there were a lot of people doing um, entertainment in my uni, but it was what most uni is this? Um, University of Hertfordshire. Okay. So um, we had a very large Nigerian community and we were very close to London. So that I just looked at it that there was a market for a proper Nigerian entertainment crew right. to do Nigerian parties and we could be, create a synergy between Nigerian, Caribbean, and even some Oingo people. Mm. I just looked at though there was a market. There was this other crew at the time, Dynamics, mm. you know, um, mm. they were the guys that were reigning, but I, I feel like because at the time they didn't have um, people that um, had good structure, mm -hmm. so we could take good advantage of that. They, they weren't doing constant parties anymore mm. because they were having arguments within themselves. So I took advantage, full advantage of that fact. and. The first thing I did was, okay, I had my school fees in my account, you know, at that time. And I said, okay, hey, if Jesus, I... You charge your money. <laughs> I said, okay, if I invest um, part of this money to do this party, push it as hard as I can, I should be able to Get make, yes, times three. It was a very huge risk. Are you kidding? It was, it, a, uh, an, it was see an extremely... See how this is like... Yes, it was an extremely huge risk. But thankfully for me, you know, 
I put that money in and I was able to make about 70% oh, wow. of that money, you know, like times, I made profit of yeah. about 70%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was how it started for me. And with me, I, I talk less, I do more. I'm more action, mm. you get, when it less comes stuff. to, yeah, when it comes to business. I don't really talk too much about my business because, you know, there are a lot of NDAs, mm. there are a lot of things that I do. So I started with that. And when I moved back to Nigeria, I did events in Nigeria as mm -hmm. well. But later on, I, I just fell in love with doing, you know, more serious business. Okay, well then, uh, it's, we, we, before we get to the more serious business, you did Big Brother, which yes. can be argued that it's not very serious, sort of. Yeah. Can be argued. But why did you decide to do that? I mean, I decided to do Big Brother because of my mom. She was a huge fan of the show. At the time, she was really ill, mm. and she forced me to go for the audition. I remember we had arguments and arguments before this audition. Oh, wow. You know, about you should go. And I'm like, Mom, they are not looking for people like me there. Mm. You know, all these people, like especially you see Sigobe, mm. all of them were in entertainment. Every single, or either in entertainment or wanting to go into entertainment. Mm. I had no single flair for entertainment. In fact, I was like, after I left Big Brother, there were movies and stuff. I always said, yo, I never told you guys I wanted to act. Well, uh, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I, I don't have any single passion for it. I feel like just because I'm popular doesn't mean I need to be in a movie. Mm -hmm. I think more people, people that are trained, people that went to acting school are the people that yeah, should be in, yeah. Well, they very least have, an, uh, have a passion for yes, it. Yes, have yeah. a passion All for right, it. So let's argue about the argument that um, Big Brother has been perceived to be seen as something not so serious, right? But I want to believe that after you left the house, there were some values that you left with. There's some things that are still instilled in you even after two so years. So I, yeah? I would argue that Big Brother is serious. Okay. And I'll argue as well that it's not serious. So with Big Brother, it's a blank slate. Mm. It's whatever you make it mm. that you make it. Like mm. before my set, there was no one on Big Brother saying, talking about business mm. persistently. Mm. There was no one on Big Brother saying, oh, we're, um, this is how you invest your money or this is, there was no one on Big Brother doing that. So. I made it serious, mm. Mm. you know, and there were other people like, you know, Teddy was really interested in investing as well. There was Lulu as well. I was talking about his, um, you know, his experience in all of that as well. So it depends. It's a blank slate. Big Brother is what you make it. So mm. you cannot say the, the show as, it, um, as, as it, on its own is an extremely big platform, platform and yeah. is an extremely serious platform like we did presentations on global warming yeah. we didn't did presentation on um, gender-based yeah. violence so you know it's extremely serious but obviously you can go you there and, the entertainment no you can go there and catch and be, yes exactly yeah. You understand you can go so there for you for you what would you say if you are given the chance to go back into the house now what would you be doing differently i wouldn't go back into the house <laughs> no but if, if they said okay you have to, to or you, you have, have to, to like what you would to you do differently right from what you did when you were in the house your face is so sad about it why you really <laughs> I have you ain't to, the big brother what happened so is it no 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 it's just i've gotten what i need from mm. big brother so Okay, I remember when I wanted to go into the house, I had a meeting with my family and everything. And what we agreed on was, okay, um, three weeks, you know, it's okay for you. You understand? Mm -hmm. I said I wanted to spend three weeks and I ended up spending seven weeks, six to seven weeks in the house. And for me, it was too much mm -hmm. because first of all, it cut the time short that I had with my mom because my mom died a week, exactly a week after I left the house. Oh, wow. Yes, I left the house on a Sunday. The next Sunday she died. So if I had left three weeks, mm. I would have had at least four week, four more weeks with my mom. Mm. So already, I did not like the fact that I stayed that long. Mm. That was not the plan. So if I'm going to go back into the house now, <sighs> I don't think I'll do anything differently. I'll still be the same, talk about business. I'll still be the same, have fun when it's necessary. That's just it. Okay, so um, the rumor has it, a bird told me that you used to be really friendly before the house. You used to be very friendly, very chatty, that like y'all were G's and stuff. And then you can, <laughs> your face, your face, facial expressions. I hope the camera is getting what I'm seeing. Yeah. Anyway, so then after you go into the house, I don't know, maybe now that you're saying what you're saying, I can imagine that. I guess you're a bit cranky about that, but um, that you just basically cut off a lot of people and we're not talking to people as much mm. and all of that. So, and it seemed to be like really common. Like everyone was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if just human beings is regurgitating what they've heard or mm. if there's actually some truth in it. And then I want to also 
give it opportunity to explain what that's would like. I take your opinion seriously, though. I would. I don't know about you, but, you, but mm. I, it doesn't really matter. I just want to know your opinion about such opinions about, that that yeah. you you know you used to be a lot more friendly and accessible, and then mm. the house kind of made you a I'm lot still, more. I'm still a lot more friendly and accessible. So you didn't necessarily like. But cut did you off cut people. off people? I didn't. I didn't cut off anyone. You see, the thing is with um, when you're growing, mm. there are people that. Um, part that would grow with you that are part of it and at the same time you don't always want to you you cannot really carry every single person along mm. but one thing you have to understand is the people that work with me like for example the person that, that is my road manager and my PA I've known him since I was seven we still work together mm. you know before the house my closest friend Jeff and me I still I still see him like three times a, or four times a week, mm. you know? So I still have all of my core people around me. You know, I, I, might not, I, might have not, I might not be close to people, you know, some people that I might have been close to, like there might be some situations that might not be good for my brand. Yeah. You know, you can put out a phone and, you know, and that kind of situation mm. is not really good for me. Yeah. You know, before when I was just an, a normal guy on the streets, I can enter inside shit and sit down where people are smoking. It's nothing. Yeah. You get me? But now, you You're know. You're captioning it. No, it's not, it's not even about. Leo. It's not even about. Leo Z. now a drug addict. <laughs> no, it's not even about the <laughs> caption. It's not even about the picture. It's even about more about my safety. Because if I'm in that kind of situation mm. now, people might want to tax me. And I don't. I'm just like, ah, yo, it's, I'm still the same person. Mm. Yes, I'm famous now, but I'm still the same person. With three companies to your name. And, okay. you know, oh, you very normal. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. not very normal guy. <laughs> but, very you, normal but you guy. get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I can't really go under the radar anymore. I can't really just be humble, humble anymore. Mm. Like, peop no one knew what I, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm just in the streets talking to average people. And, but now I can't really do that anymore. But yeah. still, I do, I do my best. Okay. Okay, well, that's a good enough answer. And I, I think it's just even in normal general circumstances, you can't just always talk to everybody. Mm. You evolve. But um, my next question is about your tweets. Yeah. Do you, have you ever, and I, I would appreciate the honesty, yeah. have you ever tweeted something just, I mean, okay, maybe not solely, but it's a good reason that you're tweeting it and it's just because of clout. Like, you know that this mm. particular tweet is going to instigate reactions mm. and then that's what you twitter or it's just everything generally um you know whimsy and you just mm. do it because okay so i've been on twitter since um 2010 you know I've, I've never really been someone that um does anything for clout mm. for me i opened twitter because i was doing parties mm. and it was kind of like another way to get my events market. out you know market. market you know you get what i'm saying at that time so twitter has evolved into like a personal diary to me so a lot of times i have to watch even what i tweet i, I cannot i don't like um unnecessary attention on my tweets unfortunately a lot of them go viral but i don't like unnecessary attention on my tweets so you would see that whenever i'm whatever thing i put out you see it's carefully constructed it's something i can so always back it up with your full chest every single yes time. i can always defend you know, you might not agree with it, but I can defend it okay. from my own but perspective. But do you sometimes which tweet one, it and then you see... catches your attention. Uh, I wish I, I your attention had them that. written down, but there's quite a lot. But have you ever, like, written something, yeah? You, you, you were confident about it, and then yeah. your response, you, the response you get makes you think, okay, like, I can see how maybe my perspective is not as yeah. up-to-date or, like, you know, as correct or politically correct or something. Yeah. Like, do you ever see that? Or you're still like, oh, more, I've said what I've said, and... You guys, because okay. you give me that vibe a lot with your responses. Like that's your opinion, and I mean yeah. it's cool to have your opinion. But do you ever like? So, like the reason why I'll give you that vibe is because in this life, yeah, no matter how politically correct, no matter how you want anything to be, you need to understand that people are going to see the world differently. Yeah. If you look at look at a mountain. The person that is below the mountain will see the mountain differently. Yeah. The person that is in the middle of the mountain will see the mountain differently. Yeah. The person that is on top, that is on the summit, will see the mountain differently. That's how the world is. And one thing a lot of us don't understand is we have to respect people's opinions. It's not a... So far, it's not harmful. Mm -hmm. There's some opinions that are very harmful, like they incite violence. Yeah. But you cannot say, because I'm telling you that this mug is black, 
maybe I am colorblind. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that is speaking, yes. Maybe genuinely your... speaking, that is how I see it. Why are you going to be arguing with me? But is it not okay for me to spar and say, bro, it's actually why? It's because no. you're colorblind. Okay, you can argue, you can black. argue with me, but why are you going to be insulting me because fair, of because fair, of my reality? Fair, fair. You get okay. what I'm saying? So based on your reality now and your experience with women and all the things that you've been through, you know, yeah. being in a physical uh, abuse, abusive relationship and all of that, what would be your advice to men? You know, that are probably going through something that they feel the, you know. Um, male what's it called now male to uh, toxic ma uh, toxic toxic yes yeah, that yeah. what you said yes <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's, what's your advice to men that are on that level that don't feel like i can't come out and talk about this i can't come out and do this what would be your advice to each and every one <laughs> okay so for me it's very simple because i don't have a mom i don't have a dad mm. so one of the most important things is i have to make sure that my relationship with people is very healthy mm. from my friendship to my um, emotional relationship with, with my woman. So it has to be extremely healthy. Yeah. So I prioritize that, my peace. Mm. I prioritize my health. Mm. You, if you die, you cannot have a relationship. So you need to understand that if someone is physically abusing you, then why are you, okay, you know, just not going to We don't have a, a lot of time, but I wanted to make sure that we have given every... Mm -hmm bit of attention know. to the right things. Is there yeah. anything else? Like if the viewers are looking at you thinking, oh, I remember this guy that I used to watch or they've you just fallen in love with you. Off whenever we're talking <laughs> about There's really no time. I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah, I, I, I promise it's not, it's not an intent. It's intentional. Intention. It's an important it topic. Um, okay. But, you know, there, there, there's fans looking now that are falling in love with the personality just even sitting yeah. here. Is there any, in any way in particular you want to traffic them to, like to go support what you do? Okay, so you can follow my Instagram, my Twitter, most my, importantly, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> my Instagram, my Twitter, mm -hmm. I, um, my Facebook, um, LinkedIn, all of my social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mainly I'm into equity investments. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I've been able to do, I was, I was able to leverage on my fame and leverage on the businesses I've done. Out, what? How is that working out for you? Well, it's working out fine. So are you saying that the if Big Brother, time, the Big Brother platform <laughs> gave you a, a, a leverage over every other thing you've been doing in the past? Yes, year? of course. It gives you it gives you a huge leverage because mm. if I want to like take a loan out now, people are definitely going to listen to you. Apart from the fact that um, I already have a structure uh, for it mm. or they, they look at my collateral, mm. but people are immediately trying yeah. to listen to yeah. me mm. because they know, they know, they yeah. know Leo da Silva. Yeah, they know his um, businesses, you know, right. all those kind of things. Yeah. They know he's not running away. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, it gives you a huge leverage. But it depends on how you project yourself. Mm. If people don't know that you're doing something tangible, they would still not come after you, yeah. no matter they how famous you are. Okay, so what's the handle, exactly? At Sarleo B da Silva. Okay, and everywhere. Yeah. Alrighty, you heard that. We'll leave you guys with a music break. Uh, we'll be right back with another special guest. So please don't go anywhere.